Hello there and welcome to another episode of Design and Influence. Today we're talking about um, Revit versus SketchUp and uh, some of the use cases and some of the whys you may need one or the other, how they kind of work together or don't work together. And uh, to unpack this subject, I have uh, I've recruited some big guns. Uh, so Michael Bass is here with us. Um, he's the expert on all architecture tool sets. Um, Michael, welcome to the episode. Thanks for having me here. Awesome. And of course, overseeing this whole uh, enterprise is Boris Rappaport, CEO of ArcIT, who is the firm that gave birth to such a wonderful show as this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not going right. to take all the credit. <laughs> so with that oversight in mind, Michael, lead us in, man. People who are considering Revit versus SketchUp, what are they really considering? Like, what what's some of the intricacies on why one platform is better than the other, or where they mesh? Yeah. Okay. Well, this is a this is a heated conversation in the AEC world. I think uh, a lot of people are familiar with these tools to some extent. Some of them are using them heavily, but Autodesk owns Revit and Trimble owns SketchUp. And so let's just start with that. Now, Revit, um, because it's owned by Autodesk, is also integrates with AutoCAD and some of the other Autodesk tools. And SketchUp and Trimble have a whole suite of their own tools. Now, the reason that you might look at these two tools you know, in competing fashion is SketchUp is really a very quick tool to use. It's super, it's easy to learn. And it's extremely powerful at creating like iterative design, creating lots of different iterations of, you know, a particular portion of a, a building or an entire facility itself. So speed is like SketchUp's number one capability. It's what drives people to it. Revit, on the other hand, <clears throat> is maybe not as much known for speed, but is, is database driven. And so it's an incredibly powerful set of tools that allow you to work from like very early stage of design all the way to the end of construction. But maybe because it's an all-in-one tool, you know, each one of those different phases may have some slight, you know, disadvantages in terms of speed or efficiency. So it does everything, but maybe doesn't do everything quite as well. Whereas SketchUp is a very much more specialized tool set. So Swiss Army knife versus, you know, a specialized knife um, for a particular task, which is scaling fish, for example, like Swiss Army knife could be okay doing it. You could do it, but you'll cover your kitchen in scales coming from personal experience. <laughs> now, yeah. Michael, break, break down the design cycle, like the life uh, cycle of design from concept all the way down to construction and, and maybe fit the, the right tool in the right uh, step. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's actually a really good question because it makes us think about these tools and, and where they, you know, where their strengths are. Um, so if we're looking at conceptual or schematic design and design development pre-construction documents, again, SketchUp is very nimble. It's very capable of creating the different designs. There's a tool called Layout, which is part of the SketchUp tool set, which allows you to create plans and elevations. So working in those phases before detailing occurs, SketchUp is, you know, a really good choice, but you do have to accept that at some point you're going to have to get into that detailing more than likely, depending on the type of project that you're working on. And so that's where, you know, Revit can take you all the way uh, through that or AutoCAD, or, you know, there's a variety of other drafting tools, but the point is you're going to hit a, hit a point at some point with SketchUp where you're going to have to take it to the next next level in terms of documentation. But before that next level comes in, there could be multiple iterations. And what you're saying is the SketchUp, um, it excels at ability to quickly iterate and, you know, kind of get the project variants down to a few to order maybe to, to one selected one. Once that happens, then SketchUp is really no good because it's not database driven, right? It's more of a design driven tool, right? And then so you need to build components and whatnot that, that goes into Revit or, or another tool. Now, what about that transition, Michael? How, is it difficult to, is it how transient are SketchUp files? 
Yeah. Well, okay. So that's, that's a fair question. And I will say it's gotten better. I mean, you, you know, if you have the professional version of SketchUp, there's even a newer tier, which I believe is called ultimate. You do have a a lot better capabilities in terms of exchanging files. So you can export a model, you can export DWG files, you can export what's called an IFC, which is a industry foundation class allows you to translate one model into another model's software. Um, but you're always going to get some, I mean, no matter how how much you try to structure it, there is always going to be that loss of fidelity when you translate, right? So it's kind of like, you know, again, this is where you may look at, hey, if I'm going to be using this tool and I want to have something that's just all the way throughout the life cycle, this is where, you know, maybe that little bit of latency or maybe getting your staff trained in Revit for those particular tasks that you're having issues you know, doing, you know, maybe that's worthwhile because for the rest of the project. So again, this, this is something that just depends a lot on what, where your challenges are. If it's about getting a client to make a decision or just putting a few different, you know, sketches of an entryway or some other design element in front of them, then you're going to be able to do that more than likely a lot quicker with SketchUp. But, you know, you are going to have to, at some point, translate that SketchUp data into another program in order to really complete your contract. Gotcha. Well, I think that's a that's a good good round. Boris, anything to add? Have you seen uh, clients and struggling with either tool sets or you see pretty clear like uh, camps, like I'm using SketchUp or I don't use SketchUp. Is this campy or I don't know if that's that word. Is this, <laughs> is, this, <laughs> is, this <laughs> is this kind of clicky? Like, hey, we use SketchUp, we don't? Or, or people kind of back and forth? Or like, how does that work? Well, I, you know, I kind of agree with what everything that Michael said, right? From what we see on our side is more, uh, where does it fall into the process? I think a lot of times um, if you're working on larger, you know, larger construction projects and you're required to use Revit during the project lifecycle, right? And then either deliver a Revit model or um, hand that over, you know, you may want to invest the time initially uh, to use Revit all the way through. However, if you're, you know, if you're um, part of the like, uh, you know, request for proposal or something, or as part of early design where you're competing uh, with other firms for that project, right? It may be quicker and less time invested to just create uh, that initial design in SketchUp once it's approved, then transfer it to a Revit, right? Because you win in terms of efficiency and less time invested into putting that little, you know, putting that initial design together, less uncertainty, if you don't win the project, you, you don't lose that much time. Mm. I have one question, one example for either one of you that wants to take it, probably Michael, and then we can round this out. Let's say I'm an architecture firm and I've, I'm bidding, designing, let's say 15 out of 50 homes. And not Boris, I think your, your situation is, is kind of similar. In your association, you know, you decided to go solar, right? So let's say 15 homes said, yeah, we want to do solar. And so you have to deliver um, a design of solar panel design for all those roofs. Like, would you use, would you go and use it Revit so you can model it out correctly? Or would you use SketchUp to initially pitch your design prior going too deep? How would you, yeah. how would you approach it, Michael? Yeah, that's, a, I mean, that's a really good use case, right? So that's exactly where I think if you are going to be using SketchUp, those are the kinds of exercises that you want to use it for to create really good illustrations of ideas, you know, and then let's say you have a Revit model with your entire facility or your entire development. Once the client gives you the, the sign off, you can then propagate that change to all of those different models because it's like a database driven, you know, approach. So I hope that answers, does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It does. So, so, you know, design it as SketchUp, use it to pitch it, win the project. Then, you know, you, you have a Revit model for the whole, all the roofs and you, you can create the, the designs. And one last question. This is total judgment call. What would be the time savings in your personal kind of ex- experience? What would be the time savings? I know I'm putting you against the wall here, but I, I want to get the answer. If those 15 roofs designed in Revit from the get-go and pitched or designed in SketchUp, what would you say that man hour variance is here? You know, that's a good, it's hard. It's hard for me to answer that. But I think, uh, 
again, Revit does, you know, if you want to change hundreds of things at once, Revit is really powerful at doing that. So I would say you're going to spend more time doing the one, creating that one roof or solar panel layout. But once you do that, you can link that model hundreds of times in your development and it's completed. So SketchUp, you know, I think the beauty is like, it's just so easy to use, you know, you can get like a 12 year old to, to, to design that for you. Right. So that, that, I think the time savings would be a lot more like 50% quicker for one, but if you needed to do two to 10, you know, it's going to be negligible between SketchUp and Revit. That's very interesting. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The answer is recruit your 12 year old to do your designs for you <laughs> in SketchUp. Michael, with that, with that valuable advice, we're gonna go ahead and finish this off. Just remember, we're Arc IT. We're here to help you manage and run your organization, you know, with happily and efficiently uh, while we take care of your IT, take care of your backend, make sure you're secure, make sure your tools are working and also helping you um, build that kind of the strategy of um, how technology is going to help you run your business. Again, here with me, Michael and, and Boris, we wish you all the best and we'll see you in the next episode. See you next time. Thanks. See you. Goodbye.